What's up, you guys? Avery Lark32 here, bringing you guys a discussion video on perform mage pendulums because Capital G the other day, uh, three days ago to be exact, I'm looking at the video right now, he made a video titled, If you're playing anything pendulum in this format, rest in pepperonis to your wallet. Very true. Um, I wanted to reply uh, to this because it's something that is extremely obvious in the game right now. Um, if you want to play anything pendulum, it's going to cost a crap ton of money, and not even pendulum. Like, this goes for any top tier deck right now is going to cost you a lot of money. Now, I'm, I know what you guys think, and we've seen this before with every other meta deck. It's cost so much money, and blah, 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 blah. True, but there's been different extents. Like, for example, um, you go back to hat format, or the beginning of that format when it was hat before. I think that was the same time the Dragon Rollers were coming out, and Dragon Rollers cost a lot of money. Hat was fairly cheap to build. I think if you play time space trap holes, they were like 30 to 40 a piece at the time. You pretty much want to play like maybe two, depending on your build. Um, but everything else was fairly inexpensive. I think Tiger Kings were pretty cheap back then. I don't remember an exact build of hat, but I just remember it being fairly cheap from what I remember, uh, other than the artifact stuff. I mean, the artifacts is what really kind of pushed it over the limit. But even then, it was only like 150 to $200. And now we're looking at Pendulum stuff, and it's, like, super expensive. Like, you look at uh, Luster Draco Slayer, like, that card's, like, 25 to 30 right now. Uh, Arch Phoenix Centric is a 60 to $70 card. Like, it's the same price tag of what Clee Fort Disc was when that first came out. Um, and then we see with other big-time meta decks that are extremely good, like Cosmo, like I just mentioned in my last video, which was my update video, um... It's a $1,000 deck. Literally, it's $1,000. At least that's how much money I've spent. And at the time, I spent 50 apiece on my farm girls. Actually, I can probably pull it up. Actually, no, I would have to pull it up on the computer, which I don't want to mess up the recording. Um, actually, I don't think I'll mess up the recording. But um, I don't want YouTube. I want TCG player. Uh, I spent about $500 to get the main gist of what I needed for the deck. Um, and now, with currently... Actually, I don't know if this stuff is still in here, but if it is, then I'll be spending $428.54. Um, and that's obviously a lot of money because uh, you there, there's only so much money that you can spend on a deck before you start questioning if it's even worth it. Um, like, I just now took out the stuff that was here in my cart, and I dropped it down to 40886 and everything's been taken except for Card Rush's Cosmo Dark Destroyer. That's fantastic. So now I gotta start fresh. Um, but what I'm trying to pull up here is my order history uh, to show you guys how much money I spent on the Cosmo deck. So this is including extra deck and everything. Um, this was for my regional that I had in uh, October. Exiton, I spent $38.95. Chivalry, I bought one at $4.62. Please, I bought one at $7.11. I bought a farm girl from one place for fifty-eight ninety-eight. Bought two forerunners for eleven cents. Uh, bought two slip riders for eleven cents. Bought three Cosmo towns for eleven cents. Then I bought two good witches for four twenty-seven. One ghost ogre for seventy-nine ninety-seven. A constellar diamond for fifteen fifty-seven. Another ghost ogre for seventy-nine ninety-five. Another Ptolemus for nine nine or one Ptolemus for nine ninety. Three Jorgators for twenty-two ninety-four. And bought two shared rides for four forty four, and then I bought two Cosmo Girls from this other store for fifty eight forty five, one E Telly for twenty four forty one, and a Draco Sack for ten twenty four. So that right there shows you how much money I spent on the deck, and even just before I cleared out my cart to get the uh, the new Cosmo stuff, it was over four hundred dollars, and I spent about five hundred on um, the Cosmo stuff previously before. So that shows you right there that just to be competitive, you have to have a good amount of money. That's just how hobbies work. If you want to be competitive in a card game type of hobby, you have to have money. The only reason why I spend so much of this money is because, like I've said before, I sell a crap ton of my stuff. What I'm going to end up doing with my collection is eventually I'm going to sell it all and be done with the game, obviously. But as of right now, I'm selling what I don't need. And I'm using that money to buy cards. I really don't use much of my money to get these cards. Like when I spent 500 on the first set of Cosmo stuff before we got this new support, all that money was from Yu-Gi-Oh! money that I had saved up from selling stuff and selling to vendors and to people and stuff like that. Mostly vendors because vendors buy stuff at pretty good prices if you go to the right ones. Um, but 
th like I said, that that was from all the money that I saved up. Uh, I don't like having to spend my own money on this game. Um, if I do, I make sure I'm able to work for that money back at my job, which is another thing, too, speaking of which, because the only reason why I'm able to afford this new Cosmos stuff is, one, because I have enough Yu-Gi-Oh money saved up. I think I have, like, somewhere in, like, the 200 range, like, almost 300 bucks worth. Um, and then I I did lifeguarding this past year, um, or, like, this past season is what it's called in, in their terms, and I still had a paycheck waiting for me. I went and picked it up the other day. It was for $91. Okay, I'll take it. Like, that helps pay for the Cosmos stuff right there. And, I mean, it's my money. Like, I'm already making more than enough money at my job right now. So that extra $91 was just kind of icing on the cake. So that helps pay for it. Um, and it's also about finding the right build, too, because sometimes you're going to realize that you're going to be spending more money at different builds. Like, for example, if for whatever reason you find a Cosmo build that's running three Time Space Trap Holes, three Cosmo Dark Destroyer, and three Cosmo Strongman, you're going to be spending about $700. Like, that's just how it's going to happen. But if you find a build that's only, like for me, I just saw Vexy's build from this regional, I think it was in Ohio, where the guy was playing one Time Space, uh, one Strawman, three Dark Destroyer, and I had everything for his side deck and everything for his extra deck, I think. Yeah. Um... And then he was playing like a C8 from the Dark Dimension, which I already had that stuff. So that can help save you money too. At the end of the day though, if you want to be competitive in a card game based setting, you have to be able to dish out money. If you say that you're competitive and you're playing something that's basically tier 2 or lower, well, no, because Ritual Beasts are tier 2 and they're kind of decent and there are other decent decks there too. I'm going to say tier 3. If you're playing a deck that's tier 3 or lower and you say you're competitive, no, you're not. You may have the competitive mindset, but you don't have the, I guess you could say, ability to want to dish out that money. Now, I'm not saying that you should be going out and spending thousands of dollars on, you know, this card game. I'm not saying that at all. I'm doing it because it's extra money that I've been saving up from cards that I've been selling. So it's not really my money that I'm spending. You see what I'm saying? So either if you don't have a job, which most people that watch my videos are between the ages of 18 to 24. Yes, I've looked at my analytics. <laughs> Um, most of you guys, I'm assuming, have a job. Uh, if you don't, you need to get one. Uh, Walmart, you start out at like 10 something an hour. Two of my friends work at Walmart. They think it's okay. Um, I'm not going to say what I make because that's just like, not really. Well, ah, screw it. It doesn't matter. I already told my friends they're making like 10 something an hour. I make like 9 an hour. Like 9.25 an hour. I make 9.25 an hour. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not afraid to say that. Um, so, you know, it, it's all, it's all about how, how much you're able to manage your money. You know, it, you can't, it's hard to be competitive too, also because like if you're in college and you have a lot of student loans and stuff like that, luckily I don't, um, I have Florida prepaid, for those of you who live in Florida and know what I'm talking about, um, yeah, I have that, for those of you that don't live in Florida, basically it's the year that you're born, you're locked into those rates, so like if college right now, you went to a university that cost 10000 but back in 1996, the year I was born, it cost 2000 to get into it, I'd be paying two grand, so that can save you a lot of money also. Um, but yeah, other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's not something surprising. It's really not. We've just kind of seen it at different intervals throughout the game. Like, look back at Teledad format. That deck alone was two thousand dollars. Like, Crush Card was like five hundred to a thousand. Dark Arms were three hundred, and like E Tellies were like sixty to seventy at that point, I think, because they like just came out. Allures were like twenty to twenty-five. Like. Oh my god, the prices were, like, huge. Like, you can tell the people that are complaining about these prices, about Cosmos and Performances, Magic Spectres, and all that. The people that are complaining about these prices didn't play back in Teledad format. Like, we veterans, we've been through that shit. Like, I started playing competitively, well, going to my first locals, I'd say, back when they started the Synchro era. Like, when they changed it from Fusion Deck to Extra Deck, and Teledad format started, yeah, that shit was bad. Nobody could afford that deck. If you had a crush card, you were topping a regional. Like, that's just how it was. You had a crush card equaled, uh, give me my invite now. Like, I wish we had that now that I had the money for it because I want my damn invite, even though I technically already got it back then because the invite's used to pass down, but besides the point. So I wish that that was still a thing, but it's not. But, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, as always. Let me know what you guys think about these prices. Is it insane? I think it is. But at the same time, that's why I've saved up my money. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know, you don't need to be talking about your financial situation. It's obviously your business. Um, but, you know, do you try to be competitive? Do you not really care anymore? Or do you just go the rogue route and just try and play stun? Or, if only it was still around, self-destruct button. All right. Thank you guys for watching, as always.